Hi, it's Lucy and today I'm going to be doing a video where Wordle chooses my TBR. So yes, if you haven't heard of the worldwide, at least North American wide, <laughs> phenomena of Wordle, it's this game that has been recently bought by the New York Times, uh, where you get six guesses a day to try and guess the word of the day basically. And so I'm going to be using the word of the day they give me in order to choose my next read for this reading vlog. This video idea is not original in any way. I did not come up with it. I don't want anyone to think I'm trying to steal this idea. I'm fully giving credit to Books and Lala and less credit to Rinsey from Rinsey Reads because Books and Lala made up this video idea. I really liked it. I thought it was interesting. And then I saw Rinsey also did this idea inspired by Books and Lala and that kind of inspired me to think that I could also do it. So I will link both of their videos down below. Books and Lala did come up with this idea. I did not. It was not my original idea. I just thought it would be a fun thing to do. So yeah, wanted to put that out there. Go check out their videos. Let's just get right into the video. We will move back in time into when I do the wordle of the day and yeah, you get to see my process and everything. Hello, I am here to do today's wordle. It is, what day is it? It is February 27th and yeah, we're gonna do today's wordle so I can find out what I'll be reading today. I'm going to record my screen. I always do wordle on my phone. Normally I do it while I'm laying down in bed but I got up for everyone and like I also didn't just get up. So yeah, okay, so. Next to me should be my Wordle. I've never done this while talking out loud, so we'll see. Uh, normally I start with stare. Sometimes I change letters if I'm feeling frisky, but let's see. Um, okay. Uh, T, A. Uh, I do try to use the letters I get, even though I don't play on hard mode. Um, but usually I just try anyway, because I'm always looking for that elusive, Two word wordle. Okay, so we got A N T is the last three letters. So let's just think about we got chant could be one. Let's go with chant. Let's see. Yeah, okay. So that was quicker than I expected. Uh three words. That's pretty cool. Now I have to share this with everyone I know. And that's that. So I'll come back and decide what book I'll be reading in a minute. I want to like get ready for the day and stuff because yeah I haven't really truly gotten up yet so I'll come back we'll talk about it. Okay, so yeah, I fed my cats, I washed my face, I'm ready for the day, it's 11 a.m. Let's pretend it's a little earlier in the day. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, so now I'm gonna choose a book. So the word is chant. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect. This is basically a word association game for me. I'm just choosing books that kind of remind me of the word chant. So like the first thing I think of when I hear the word chant is obviously like singing or something, or like, you know, a chant is like repeating words. I never looked up the definition. Maybe I should. Maybe I'll do that. Um, but yeah, right now we're on my one of my bookshelves. If you saw my last video, which is hopefully my last video, you would have seen that I reorganized my shelves. So, and you would know that I have two TBR shelves technically. Um, so this is the first one. This is specifically black authors, mostly kind of, it got kind of messed up a little bit already. But yeah, so we'll just see if any of these remind me of the word chant and looking at it, honestly, um, this first book does remind me. Um, it's Amanda Gorman's Call Us What We Carry. This is a collection of poems. Poetry kind of reminds me of chants a little bit. I don't know if that's too much. I don't know. This is kind of the only one that I'm thinking about. So I'll hold on to this for a second. And looking at the rest of my TBR, like my black author TBR, nothing else is like 
screaming at me. So I'm gonna look at my Goodreads just to see. I did end up looking up the word chant. It has three definitions, two as a noun, one as a verb. So we have a repeated rhythmic phrase, typically one shouted or sung in unison by a crowd, and a short musical passage and two or more phrases used for singing unmetrical words, a psalm or canticle sung to such music. Okay, uh, so music is what I was thinking of. But then as a verb, it says say or shout repeatedly in a sing-song tone. So I guess I could also be looking for titles that I can imagine people would be using as a chant, you know, like that sh saying or shouting repeatedly in, sing in a sing-song tone. Okay, so I wanted to be a little closer so that we can look at this together, you know. So right now I have my want to read shelf. Uh, first, I'm, I'm just gonna search for a book with the word chant in it to see if anything comes up. And then we have this one because the author's name is Chantel, but I don't feel like that's really the spirit. So yeah, I don't really have anything on my TBR with the word chant in it. I'll look for sing, see if anything comes up for sing or song. Okay, so these are a bunch of books I read. Let's see if I can order by date read and then it'll show the ones I haven't read first if I reorder it. We have the Maya Angelou book, Singing and Swinging and Getting Merry Like Christmas. Um, Sing Unburied Sing, that could be a good one. Okay, Sing Unburied Sing seems like it would be a good one. I didn't realize this was part of a series, um, but it is, It's. I don't think it's long, but I'm not sure if it's the best for this vlog, sort by date added and see if anything jumps out at me that I recently added to my TBR. You know, I I have this on my like actual bookshelf and it didn't jump out to me, but this is about mermaids and possibly sirens, I'm not sure. So like they could sing. It actually doesn't seem like they do sing, but so never mind. I don't see anything about it, but it was an, a nice idea, you know. Okay, nothing jumps out at me. This word is really hard for me. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna search for one more thing and then I, I think I'm done. Uh, there's probably more words with song in it. I mean, more books with the word song in it. So there's that. So I have three books with the word song in it. Song of Solomon, that is not correct for this vlog. I definitely can't read a Toni Morrison book in this vlog, I feel like. We have Song of Blood and Stone and a Song of Rates and Ruin. That could be good. I don't know when I added this one. One thing. Tucker's on my bookshelf. He's not allowed on there. He knows it. I moved my books because I had to use them as my tripod and Tucker's like, I see an open space. I see it. I know there's an open space now. I know it. Right, Tucker? Right? I'm going to look up if I can. I don't own a physical copy of A Song of Race and Ruin, so I'm going to see if I can get a Kindle copy or ebook in theory i would have planned to go to the library but it is raining today so i don't want to walk a mile to the library sorry um yeah which also makes it perfect to film this vlog because i'm not gonna go anywhere <laughs> yeah i'm gonna look up if i can get song of blood and stone or so a song of raisin ruin from the library or sing unburied sing from the library like digitally and then we'll come back and I'll make a final decision. So I was between two books in the end, Call Us What We Carry by Amanda Gorman and A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. I am ultimately deciding to read A Song of Wraiths and Ruin because even though it's longer, I did look through my library apps and I found that I could get both the ebook and the audiobook of A Song of Wraiths and Ruin from Hoopla so it'll be easier for me to read in one day. This, even though it's shorter, it is a collection of poetry, so I think it will be harder for me to vlog it. And also I think this is supposed to be like pretty emotional. And yeah, I think I'd rather read like just a fictional story today. So that's what I'm going with. Yeah, so now I'm gonna start my day and reading. I wanted to do this before I ate breakfast so I could listen, so I could hopefully, so I could start whatever I decide to read while I'm eating breakfast and stuff. So I'm going to do that. I don't have a whole lot of plans today. I do have some like administrative stuff I want to do in theory. I want to edit a video. I don't know if I'll have time to do that today, but yeah, it will be mostly a chill day though. So yeah, let's get started. Oh, I should tell you what A Song of Race and Ruin is about. So sorry about that. This is a high fantasy YA story. This 
is the first book in a duology. I believe the second book is already out and it's inspired by West African folklore. I'm reading Goodreads by the way. So we follow two characters. The first one is Malik, whose sister is kidnapped by a vengeful spirit. And in order to get it back, Malik strikes a deal where he must kill Karina, our other main character, who's also the crown princess of Ziran. And Karina is, like I said, the crown princess. And her mother has like recently been assassinated and Karina feels like she cannot be queen. So she has a plan to resurrect her mother. And in order to do this, she requires the beating heart of a king. So she comes up with this plan to offer her hand in marriage to the victor of the Solstasia competition. And so whoever wins, she'll marry them and then he'll be king. And then she can take his heart to resurrect her mom. Malik enters this contest as a way to get to Karina because he's trying to kill her. They're trying to kill each other. I believe, is this, this isn't Starcrest Lovers, I think. I don't know. I don't know what this will be. I guess it'll be like some kind of hate to love. I don't know, we'll see. But yeah, excited to read this and I'll be back later. Balzer and Bray and Harper Audio present a Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown Performed by A.J. Beckles and Jordan Kahn A note from the author Please note, this book depicts issues of mild self-harm ideation, fantasy violence, emotional and physical abuse, anxiety and panic attacks, parent death, and animal death. I have done my best to approach these topics with sensitivity, but if you feel this kind of content may be triggering, please be aware. I am now 30% through the audiobook of A Song of Wraiths and Ruin. I'm really enjoying it. I I don't know what I expected. I kind of went in with no preconceived notions, I guess, maybe a little bit. It's been a while since I've read a fantasy like this, I think. I can't remember the last one. Yeah, so I wasn't sure what I was expecting exactly, but I am really enjoying it. I also cleaned my kitchen. You can't see it right now, but it's cleaner than it was before. Now I'm on the couch and I'm gonna start reading the ebook i think for a little bit but yes yeah, so far we have gone through almost the entire synopsis basically we got to meet the characters meet the people around them have an idea of who are going to be like important in the story so for karina who's a princess we had to see kind of how the relationship with her mother came to be we learn about the other members of her family who passed away so we're dealing a lot with grief this book definitely is going to deal a lot with grief because it's revealed in the beginning of the story that Karina's dad and her older sister who was supposed to be the crown princess passed away in a fire like 10 years prior to the beginning of this story so in the beginning of this we see Karina dealing with the ramifications of that and how that affected her relationship with her mom and it's described how they basically went in opposite directions and Karina does not feel very close to her mom which makes it even more sad when the assassination happened which is in the synopsis so there's that and Malik's side also dealing with grief his father passed away prior to the story and because of his sister's abduction obviously that's clearly very hard on him and we're really getting to see that both of these characters it seems like have something akin to like panic attacks or something karina gets migraines a lot apparently like when things remind her of her family that passed away and things remind her of her sister or of her dad and also where the title of the story is kind of revealed because a song of wraiths and ruin um a, the song part karina is like an accomplished musician with i forgot the name of the instrument it seems like a magical instrument or it's like a folk instrument that i'm not aware of if it's real um but yeah she's an accomplished musician in the beginning of the story she like beats someone with her musical talent which was really cool so i think that's where the bigger element comes from and wraiths is one of the like magical beings that they end up coming across so always like that I'm really enjoying the world building. I feel like it's being done well. I feel like it's being done in a measured way. How do you say that? Like the, the pacing, I guess, is good 
for that. We are like dropped into the world, but we get enough like details of things that happen as we come across it. Not, it doesn't really feel info dumpy to me or anything like that. And there's some stuff in the world that the characters are learning because this is a world that has magic, but most people don't believe in magic quite. Like they have gods that they that most people pray to and like in this society everyone is aligned with a section of life i guess like there are the basic elements and then there's life and then something else there's there's six alignments that people can have and when they're born they get like whatever alignment they're under i think it's it kind of reminds me of the zodiac a little bit like because i think it's based on the time of year that you're born so yeah, that part is really interesting. And yeah, I'm really excited to learn more about the world, really excited to see where the story goes. And I'm just, yeah, really enjoying it. I'm glad I'm reading it. I don't know when I would have gotten to this without Wordle, so I'm glad it's starting. And yeah, I'm gonna keep reading with my cats. Here they are. Okay, I read a little more and there's just one thing that I wanted to point out that I feel like is I don't know if this is a plot hole or something but like in the synopsis Karina makes the prize for the Sostana which is this competition event that all of the people of the different alignments compete in like what there's a champion for each alignment Karina is making the winner of the competition her king However, this is an issue because some of the champions are not men. Reading the synopsis, you would just assume like, oh, that's the way it is. So what if a girl wins? Like, I feel like that's, n that's not the heart of the spell. Or else she could just kill herself if it's just a queen, I'm just saying. I mean, not that, I don't, I guess she, you can't do that. But if she marries a woman, they won't be king. So... That's something there. I don't know if anyone else noticed that, if that's gonna be addressed at all, I don't know. But yeah, I wanted to point that out because I thought it was weird. <laughs> I said when I started this that I, I didn't think it would be just a one day vlog, like I wasn't planning to finish the book in one day and I didn't. I'm not finishing it in two days either. I'm currently 70% through, so like I did make a lot of progress. Uh, I probably could have finished it yesterday if I hadn't taken like a three to four hour nap in the middle of the day, you know, just lying down on the couch and then you have two cats on top of you, like how, what else am I gonna do, okay? Uh, yeah, and then today is Monday, so I worked today and then I also took up half the day by worrying if I had a concussion or not because I hit my head. And uh, yeah, I don't think I have a concussion. If you're watching this, I didn't have a concussion. But yeah, I spent half the day freaking out about that, so I really didn't get any more reading done. But I am 70% through. I basically got all that done yesterday. And yeah, I probably will try and spend the evening reading some more. I could finish it tonight, but I'm not sure if I will because I should probably do other things. So we'll just see where my night takes me. Um, it's like, yeah, it's 7.30 right now, but as an update on the book, <laughs> I started taking notes because like I said yesterday I was reading it really fast and so I didn't want to forget anything I wanted to talk to you all about but I am still enjoying it. I still am finding like every aspect to be just like enjoyable to read. The only, not really issue, but I guess it's been a while since I've read like a high fantasy like this so there are a lot of words that I'm kind of forgetting the meanings of and things like that. So there's that but that's not really the book's fault that's me i did want to make a correction because earlier in the vlog when i was explaining like what was going on in the beginning i said that malik's father our male main character uh, passed away he did not actually he abandoned them or he abandoned his family basically um it's described as like one day his dad just like left and so 
They have to like restructure their lives basically because they functionally lost their dad. They don't know where he went and he never came back. It was just too hard to like have to like support his family, I guess. So it's a different kind of grief that he's going through than I originally said, but it's still like a form of grief. As part of the world building and stuff, there is like an element of prejudice and hierarchy. I can't remember the word that means this, but you know, there is a, an element of hierarchy based on ethnicity and where you're from. Malik's like ethnicity, I'm gathering, which is called Ashran, is like the lower class ethnicity. They're treated as if they're the lowest class, like barely even human, basically is considered in this city that they're in. And in the beginning of the book, how we get here is because Malik's family, his younger sister and his older sister are trying to get to the city because for more opportunity and stuff. And in the beginning, it's described how they're pretending not to be Ashran because they wanted to get in. And there are a lot of refugees coming from his area of the country the globe not really the country i guess because it seems like this royal family runs just the city so yeah i'm not sure about that part of the world building i don't think we're gonna get too much more in this book but in the next book hopefully we'll get more about like the wider world i guess or maybe i'm just bad at making the map in my head so there are a lot of parallels drawn to how discrimination works in our world so yeah they're pretty blatant to me i don't know if they'll be blatant for you know a younger audience probably but that is in the book in case you were wondering about it um it does seem like maybe the next book will deal with that a little bit more because but yeah and then we have the whole like actual like main plot of rena and malik trying to kill each other uh, basically, and I think I said in the beginning I thought it was gonna be a hate to love romance and it kind of is. It's working for me better because throughout the story we don't really see them together and like their plans to kill each other are both without knowing the other person. Like Karina doesn't even know who she's trying to kill. She, like she's just like, oh I need whoever wins this competition is gonna be my hu husband and I have to kill him so I can get the king's heart so I can bring my mother back but all the action and stuff that's going on is really interesting, really fun to read, and I'm just really enjoying the story. My camera's about to run out of space, so I have to end this clip, but I'll be back when I finish this book and tell you all my final thoughts. So I have finished A Song of Wraiths and Ruin. I really, really enjoyed it. I feel like I have barely said anything negative about the book throughout this whole vlog because I enjoyed it. I had a good time reading it. It had everything I want from a fantasy novel like this. It had characters I liked to read about. I fell for these characters. An interesting plot. I wanted to see where it was going. I wanted to just see everything. The world was really fascinating to me. I wanted to know more about the world and like I enjoyed continuing to read it and yeah, I think those are the main elements of a story that you would want to enjoy. And I enjoyed all of them. I believe I'm giving this book four stars. Wordle did me good by helping me choose this book. So I'm glad I read it. I'm really excited to read the sequel. Hopefully I'll be able to read it next month. I'm trying to just actually continue series. So I'm planning to like buy this book because I really enjoyed it and like a physical copy of this book and then I'll and buy it the physical copy of the second book and then I'll be done with the duology. I'll know everything that happens and yeah. To like add on to everything else I was saying earlier basically just about the end of the book and what I liked and didn't like about it. I thought it had good like twists and turns. Some of the reveals were things that I suspected but they were revealed in a way that felt satisfying and not like ugh so predictable. So I enjoyed that part. The only thing I would to maybe go back, not go back on, but earlier in the video, earlier while I was reading this, I thought the magic system was better than I feel like it ended up being, I guess. Like there was a lot about the magic system we don't know and that's on purpose, but I felt like it got a little bit too confusing at the end because we don't know so much. And I feel like, and I don't just feel like I have a, I guess it's a feeling because I don't know exactly what happened in the second book, but based on where the first book ended, I that it will definitely be explored more in the second book. But yeah, just the reasoning why we don't know as much in this book didn't make as much sense to me as like I just read more in the story. So that was a negative, but other than that, I just really enjoyed the story. I'm glad I read it. And yeah, I would absolutely recommend reading at least this first book. Hopefully the second book doesn't let me down. And I would read more from this author in the future. I don't know if she's released any more books. I, I don't know. But yeah, I'm really glad I read this. Wordle steered me in the correct direction. I'm happy I read it. And 
that's all there is to say. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with me. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up in the comments. In the comments down below, let me know if you enjoy Wordle, if you've been playing it, would you do something like this? It doesn't have to be a video based on this, but you know, let Wordle guide your day or something. I don't know. But yeah, that's it for me now. I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.